on mental health for small business owners. It's a particularly timely topic. My name is Steve Boers. I'm the director of the Southeast Community College Entrepreneurship Center and Focus Suites. Uh, we welcome you to this webinar. You are all on mute now. Um, at the end of the presentation, we may take you off mute to allow questions to be asked, but for now you're on mute. Uh, if you do have questions that you think of during the presentation, go ahead and enter them into the chat feature, and then one of the hosts will pass those questions along to our speaker. And with that, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Uh, Colleen is a coach, speaker, author, and owner of Balanced Life. Colleen has learned a lot about entrepreneurship from owning and managing three businesses and from housing her coaching and counseling business at the SEC Entrepreneurship Center for four years before finding and converting her own office building. She achieved her lifelong goal of becoming an author in September of 2017 when she published her book, How to Create Your Balanced Life, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon as well as audio book on Audible and on audio CD through Colleen. Colleen uses her skills as a former teacher when she offers workshops, trainings, webinars, online courses, small group coaching, and speaks to organizations on a variety of topics related to creating balance, achieving goals, increasing productivity, and finding meaning. She uses her personal and professional experiences to help her clients master the areas of their lives that are holding them back and to create a plan that will help them to achieve their goals while finding purpose. Colleen is a member of a number of professional organizations, including the American Counseling Association, the Association of Private Practice Therapists, and the National Board of Certified Counselors. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Deuce Colleen as our speaker today. Colleen, take it away. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming, and I really appreciate that um, Steve asked me to do this. Uh, this is a, a strange time in our lives that uh, we've never experienced anything quite like this before, so it's all a big learning curve for everybody. And all you have to do is turn on the TV and you will um, be faced with everything about the coronavirus and um, all of the stuff that's going on in the world. And it's created a lot of anxiety. We also see every day stuff that's happening with the stock market, the stuff that's happening with people uh, not being able to run their businesses, people losing their jobs and all of that adds to the anxiety. So today I want to address some of that with you. And I know we only have an hour, but we will um, do our best to cover as much as we can. So um, in the midst of all this, I thought that you might enjoy a little bit of humor to start off with. I got this in my email box this morning, so it was timely. So half of us are going to come out of this quarantine as amazing cooks. The other half will come out with a drinking problem. I used to spin the toilet paper like I was on Wheel of Fortune. Now I turn it like I'm cracking a safe. I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. Still haven't decided where to go for Easter or Passover, the living room or the bedroom. And PSA, every few days, try your jeans on just to make sure they fit. Pajamas will have you believe all is well in the kingdom. So somebody posted this and they said that they, it was all anonymous, so I'm not sure who wrote it, but you'll see some more of those later. Um, some of the things that I want to cover first are introductions. Steve introduced me. Um, if, if we have a small enough group, I thought that we could take a moment for you to introduce yourselves. You could do that in the chat. Um, We'll do that in a minute. And then we're going to discuss concerns and fears that you want to address today. And I'll offer you some tips and we'll discuss some of those and we'll demonstrate and practice. So you have some skills when you leave here and then we'll talk about planning and I'll give you books and resources. So Steve already mentioned who I am. I would like to know from you 
you can put in the chat uh, your name, your business or businesses, and how you and your business have been affected by this health crisis. And if you don't want to put all of that, at least put your name and your business. Um, and if there's something that you would like to get out of today so that we make sure to cover that. Okay, and I can't see the chat now since I have this in front of me. Um, so one of the other co-hosts is going to have to let me know what people are saying. Can I, do I stop the share in order to see it? There should be a little down arrow that says view options. Okay. And then one of them should be a view chat. If you'd like, Colleen, I'd be glad to read the chats as they come up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see what he's, where he says that I should be able to do that. Because um, what I get is on the more side, I see, okay, maybe I can go to chat there. There, I can see them. All right. I see the, the chat from Brooke and Tammy. Well, hello, Tammy, Damien. I haven't seen you for ages. Welcome. Um, it is hard to be a public speaker when there is no public. Yeah, everybody is at home right now, so that does make it difficult. Thank you for, for sharing. Um, is there, all right, Julie, employed with Nebraska Vocational Rehab, self-employment program. Oh, great. Um, I, will, I will definitely have resources for you and you will be able to share some of those with your clients. Jennifer Bueller, Lincoln Harper Music Therapy. Some private clients also working part-time for hospice. No longer see hospice patients. I've been able to teach them to Zoom classes to preschool. Yeah, that is a big change for you, I'm sure, not being able to see your hospice clients. Um, but I will, I will give you some tools to use. Annette Marquez Consulting help nonprofits with board of directors responsibilities. So Annette, how is this affecting you? Are you doing everything online or are you able to still talk with people? Using the telephone. Okay, great. Yeah, I think I'll, at least you can still do some work and have some contact by using the phone. That helps. Yeah. And Jeff. Kippel, Kelpie. Is it, am I getting that right? Cybersecurity Consulting. Threats are changing, anxiety causing people to act out, fear, anger, create a variety of different potential threats. Yes, for sure. And uh, we see some of that coming out in different ways. Okay, who else do we have on here that hasn't responded yet? Greg Christensen, did you want to tell me about yourself? Or Doug Hancock? Or Rita, anybody else? Okay, well, um, thank you for sharing that. If there's anything in particular that you want to make sure that we cover, just let me know and I will make sure that I answer it before the time is out, okay? So let me shrink that back up. 
All right, so some of the concerns and fears that are out there. How long will this last? If only we knew, right? Um, since this is new for all of us and we've never experienced anything like this, we all want it to come to an end quickly, but the truth is we just don't know. So um, that can cause anxiety. What if I have to close my business permanently? And there are some people who have had businesses that this has happened to. So it is a concern, especially when you own the business and people are doing all kinds of things to try to make sure that they can stay open and they're trying to find ways to continue to pay their employees so their employees can hang in with them until this is all over. What about health insurance? I've had a number of people um, talk to me about that. Some are dealing with paying for really expensive COBRA insurance while they are temporarily out of a job. And at least they have that option available, but it is very expensive and then they have to weigh out, is it worth it or not? How will I pay the bills? And this is, I just talked to a friend last night and she's always been a high earner, but she's out of work right now. And um, she was talking about just doing telemarketing just to have money to pay for the groceries so they don't have to take money out of their retirement accounts. Uh, so that's a concern. How can I continue to earn money? So if you can't go and apply for a job and actually go work in a different place, like work in a store, work in a restaurant, or someplace like that, and you can't run your own business because your doors have been shut, not because you want to close them, but because the governor is telling you you have to close them, then how can you continue to earn money? And what do I need to do to keep my business running? Trying to keep, keep it going while you can until things get back to normal or some semblance of normal. And any other um, concerns or fears that you want to address today? And you can leave it in the chat for me so I can see. Oh, yes, Doug, we are all muted. Um, everybody's muted right now. Uh, but if you can shoot it out into the chat, maybe we can individually unmute some people um, as long as we can see their faces know who they are, we can sure unmute if that's easier for people. Does anybody have any other fears or concerns that you have on your mind? You know, these are some of the main ones, but I'm open to others if you have others. All right, well, we'll go on. Um, So one of the first things that I tell people in order to deal with anxiety, the first thing you can do is just slow everything down. Um, this has been done for you in large part by what has happened. Whether you want it to slow down or not, um, this has been what's, what's happened to everybody. But with your mind, just to slow everything down in your brain and just breathe. You know, we're so used to being busy all the time that we forget to just breathe. Just slow everything down and breathe. Um, this has happened before and we'll get through it. It'll be okay. But the reason we want to breathe is because when we get anxious, we tend to breathe from our chest, you know, up and we aren't getting a deep breath. And what happens is that causes more anxiety and it can cause you to hyperventilate. So what we want to do is we want to breathe more deeply so that you get oxygen to your brain and you get oxygen flowing through your body and it calms you down. So that's always the first line of fire. So the first thing you do, how do you do it? To breathe properly, if you watch a baby breathe, they know how to breathe before they learn how to hold their breath, okay? So we as adults have forgotten how to breathe deeply. And what you do, you just put your hands on your belly and 
what you you have a diaphragm in your belly and think of it as a big balloon and what happens is when you when you breathe deeply instead of breathing from your neck up you want to breathe all the way down and fill that balloon down in your belly so when you breathe in your belly goes out so you breathe in through your nose and you should feel your belly fill up nice and round and fat <laughs> and then blow out and you empty that balloon and for some people and you do it again and then you let it out and for some people this is really difficult to manage because they're so used to breathing incorrectly but once you get the hang of it you'll notice a big difference and you'll probably feel lightheaded and you'll feel tingling down in your fingertips even some people need to lie down to do it um, and then you your body's in a position where you can feel your belly raise and lower as it fills with air and, and gets rid of it okay um, so you want to practice that with me or you want to move on I usually practice with people so they get the hang of it <clears throat> what do you think thumbs up thumbs down <laughs> what do you want to do <laughs> okay cat says thumbs up all right so what you'll do is go ahead and <clears throat> put your hands on your belly right beneath your belly button okay sit up straight all right so that you can get a good deep breath hands on the belly and breathe in through the nose for the count of five while you fill up the balloon in your belly ready and breathe out and breathe in and fill the balloon and breathe out while you're emptying the balloon one more time breathe in and breathe out okay does anybody notice anything different about how you're feeling it's just a, a real fast and easy thing to do to relieve your stress and always come back to the breath you can do it anytime anywhere it's portable you don't have to have any special equipment <clears throat> you you can do it in the grocery store if you're getting anxious because somebody's getting too close to you you can do it um, when you're out on the bike trail and somebody is coughing right in front of you you know <laughs> wherever you are you can just slow everything down and breathe that's the first line of fire okay um, next ask yourself the three questions now this is cognitive behavioral therapy for those of you who know what that is and the three questions um, usually put things straight right away so the first question is is what i'm thinking based on fact is it a fact that i am going to get covid 19 and i'm going to end up in the hospital and i'm going to have to be on a respirator no that's not a fact is it a fact that my business is going to shut down, that I'm not going to be able to run it anymore? No, it's not a fact. Is it, is it um, a fact that, um, I don't know, that I'm not going to be able to pay the bills this month? You know, whatever you're thinking, evaluate it first. Is what I'm thinking based on fact? Because that is the first thing that you come to is people jumping to conclusions and that creates anxiety so when you're you're guessing the worst possible outcome you're not helping yourself second question is is what i'm thinking helping me to feel the way i want to feel does it help you to feel happy to think i'm going to have to shut my doors and close my business no does it make you feel good to think I'm going to end up in the hospital no you know so start thinking about how you want to feel and get your thoughts in alignment with that third question is what I'm thinking helping me to achieve my goals so if your goals are related to feeling good running your business living your life you know looking forward 
ask yourself if those kinds of negative thoughts are helping you to get there, okay? And if the answer to any of these questions is no, then stop and change your thinking because that's where the problem is. It's not in what's really happening, it's in the thought process. So you have to get a handle on that and when you get a handle on that, you change how you feel, okay? Questions or comments? Okay. <clears throat> and then this is another thing. Um, when we feel like things are just too much and we can't control them, people get really anxious, okay? And that the anxiety is coming from trying to control something you can't. So remind yourself of the things that you can control. And for those of you who are familiar with the serenity prayer, um, it's used in 12-step programs. It's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And people get hung up on not knowing the difference and they try to control things they can't. You can't control if other people are wearing masks out in public. You can't control um, when this is going to end and when people can open their doors back up. You can't control when you're going to be able to travel and go on that vacation. You know, None of those things are within your control right now. So just surrender to the feelings and know that they will pass, okay? It's okay to feel whatever you're feeling. If you're feeling anxious, you know, oh, we just had a holiday and I didn't get to spend time with my family. Or, oh, you know, I, um, I planned a vacation and now I can't go. And I really was looking forward to it. And, you know, this relative was waiting to see me and now I might not get to see them. You know, all of those things that are happening you just have to feel the feelings. You're not going to, to die from the feelings. It may feel like it if you let them take over, but just feel them and just be okay with them. You know, make peace with them and they will pass. They will definitely pass, okay? Um, oh yeah, I like that. Greg says, Newt Scamander says, my philosophy is that worrying means you suffer twice from fantastic beasts and where to find them. So true. You create your own misery. That is right on, Greg. Thank you for sharing. Uh, and you know, just paying attention to your feelings. Everybody has them and it's all okay. Okay. Um, one of the things that you can do is when you're, you're having these feelings, just notice where in your body you're feeling them. For some people, they're gonna feel like a tightness in their chest. For some people, they feel it in the pit of their stomach. For some people, they feel a headache or they get tightness in their shoulders. You know, wherever you store your stress, notice where you feel it in your body. And then you can rate the intensity of it. How intense is it when you're feeling that? Um, on a scale of one to 10, where is it? And then just stay with the feelings and notice when they decrease in intensity. You know, maybe if you're feeling the tightness in your shoulders, but you're just allowing yourself to feel the feelings, just acknowledge. It's like watching out a window when you're on a train, you know? just let them pass by, you know, just feel them and watch them go. And it's okay. Notice when they start decreasing, when you're starting to see them pass by and they're not just right there in front of you. And just breathe, you know, breathe through it. It will be okay. And when you just can sit with those feelings and acknowledge them, there's a peace that will come. It may take some time, but it will come. So give it some time, all right? And EFT is also tapping, emotional freedom technique. Have any of you heard of this before? 
raise your hands if you know what the emotional freedom technique is, EFT, tapping. Okay, um, it's, it's kind of a, a newer thing and you can find things out on um, the internet. You can find um, people doing it on YouTube. You'll find famous people are doing it. If you're familiar with Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup from the Soul author, um, he has videos on it. Um, there is, let me think the guy's name. It's, I had it. It'll come to me again in just a second. Um, yeah, I'll come to it. But uh, with tapping, what you're doing is you're, you're using different meridian points in your body. So it's based on, if you think of, um, oh, I'm losing my words. The meridian points and you think of the needles. <laughs> thinking of Chinese medicine where you put the needles in and you know where you're having the pain and uh, acupuncture thank you good lord acupuncture and acupressure sorry I just lost my brain for a minute um, but thank you for helping me find it um, so you're using those points at the same time that you're changing a thought and what happens is as you're tapping you are acknowledging the feeling and you're changing to a new feeling at the same time. Okay, and so um, what I can show you, <laughs> thank you, Jennifer. Um, what I want you to, to do is we're gonna start with the karate chop point, okay? So on your hand, if you look where this line comes around the side and you're gonna take three fingers and you're just going to tap around that line, okay? And what you're going to do is the first thing you're going to do is you're just going to say, even though I feel anxious about my business or about getting sick or about the coronavirus or whatever it is that's bothering you, even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Okay, and then go to the other hand and the other karate chop point and you do the same thing. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Okay, and then there are, there's a series of tapping points and I'm looking at the time. I could show you real quickly what they are but you're gonna do the same thing. And what some of the different people that teach it will, sh will have you do is they just kind of do different bits and pieces. I have you say the same thing because to me it reinforces it. Um, but other people say by mentioning these other things, you're acknowledging those negative feelings. I'm saying I'd rather focus on changing to the positive. But um, the next point after you do the hands, is then you go above the eyebrows right here. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Then you go here to the temples, right at the corner of the eye. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. And then you go here, for those of you wearing glasses like me, you might have to take them off, and you're going to this cheekbone right here. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Then you're gonna to go to the mustache. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. 
and then okay somebody good idea i'll do this thank you steve okay and then you're going to go to this divot right here in your chin all right even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself and then you're going to go to right here the collarbone where the where it comes together here where it meets in the middle go two fingers over and you tap there even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself even though i feel anxious i still love and accept myself and then this one is they call it the armpit but it's not really the armpit for those of you who wear a bra <laughs> Um, this is your bra line, okay? So you go under one of the arms and you're tapping there. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. And then you go to the other side. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. And then you're going to go here to the top of your head. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. And you come back to the karate chop. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. The other one, even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself. Deep breath in and out. And notice how you feel. And um, by the time you do that, you know, for just a few minutes, for most people, it brings down their level of anxiety and they can breathe again. And if you're still feeling anxious, go through the process again. And some people, I tell them, you don't have to go through all those points. I just showed them all to you. And some people have a preference for one over another or two over another. Um, I know somebody who really likes you know the chest thing and um, she she actually goes around in a circle there um, for some people they prefer you know um, doing some place some specific place on their face or the karate chop it doesn't matter the point is is that what you're doing is you're acknowledging that you're having the anxiety so you're saying even though I feel anxious so you're giving monkey mind a little attention. You're saying, yes, I hear you. I know that you're anxious right now. So I, I'm acknowledging you. You don't need to get louder and louder and keep making more noise, okay? The monkeys get chattering and they make a lot of noise. So you're just trying to quiet the monkeys down and you're saying, okay, I see you. I acknowledge you. I'm aware that I am feeling anxious, okay? And then you're saying, even though I feel anxious, I still love and accept myself because that's what it comes back to is we have to accept where we're at and know that we're going to be okay. And then when you're doing that and you're, you're getting that brought home by the acupressure points, um, you're calming yourself down. Okay. Uh, questions or comments about that? Yeah, somebody, Jennifer said, the pecs are a place where people tend to hold a lot of tension. A little bit of self-massage doesn't hurt. Right on, that's true. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of different things that you can do to give yourself a massage. And um, once again, it deals with the pressure point. So if you're having a headache, you know that you can, you can rub this part right here, and that's supposed to help with the headache, okay? Kind of the webbing on both sides and there are different pressure points that work that way as well okay 
questions or comments? Was that okay? Did you, have you seen that or done that before, anybody? See, I'm used to hearing voices. This is, <laughs> I'm used to having people in a classroom. So here I am in my conference room where I usually meet with people. So it's strange to me to <laughs> be interacting and not have any voices. Okay. Um, Tammy. Yes, it works and you do it twice a day. Good. And I have clients do it, um, especially the ones that are dealing with a lot of anxiety. I have them practice it at least twice a day and it has a, an immediate effect. So, and for one thing too, it takes your mind off of whatever it is that, you know, monkey mind is going crazy over. All right. Let me go back to share the screen. Okay. And we already practiced. All right. Uh, the next thing is going outside and experience the healing and calmness of nature. I don't know if you're aware of it, but nature has a way to naturally calm all those feelings. So breathe in the fresh air, notice the plants, watch the animals. There are lots of birds and squirrels and bunnies and all kinds of things in the springtime. And look at the sky. The sky is always amazing to me. Look at the, the clouds and at night I love to look at the stars and the moon. The moon, moon was beautiful and we had the super moon last week. Um, listen to the sounds of nature listen to the birds and if you're someplace where there's water flowing uh, that is always calming to people as well i love the sounds of the ocean we're a long ways from ocean here in lincoln but um, feel the grass the ground sand water textures temperature you know when it's nice out, i never wear shoes except in public so i'm always outside walking around without shoes on so i can feel the grass and the ground under my feet um, and when it's nice out, it's nice to feel the temperature. Absorb the sunshine and elevate your vitamin D. When you get outside and you get some sunshine, even if it's for 10 to 15 minutes a day, you increase your vitamin D, which makes you feel better. And it helps you to um, be happy again. <laughs> Smell the flowers and freshly cut grass. In this time of year, we're seeing flowers pop up. I have beautiful daffodils this time of year and uh, you'll see more and more of those. So get outside, enjoy the fresh air. If you can't go out on a bike trail or out to a park, just go in your backyard if you can. You know, find some place nearby where you can get outside and just enjoy. And use all of your senses. Um, when people say, get, come to your senses, you know, if you've ever seen an old movie and somebody's kind of getting themselves all wound up and they say, come back to your senses, that's what they mean. So use your senses all five of them and uh, see what what happens with how you feel calm and relaxed and let's see you want to release endorphins and i always tell people that there are three three real easy ways to release endorphins and endorphins if you're wondering um, i always describe it to especially kids as they're the little happy guys that run through your body and make you feel better <laughs> okay they live in your brain and you want to let them out to play so when you're releasing the endorphins you can do it by exercising or going out for a walk you want to just let them go let them go out and play you want them to come out and run through your body so you feel happy do something creative and people kind of get a limited idea of creativity they think well i'm not an artist i don't draw or paint you don't have to draw or paint to do something creative um, it might be something like sewing gardening cooking um, building something you know anything doing something with your hands doing anything at all that's creative writing um, a lot of people like to write poetry, you know, anything that's doing something creative. And to laugh. Um, laughter is the best thing for you, you know, and you release endorphins. And when you're laughing, you're actually massaging your 
internal organs. So you want to laugh as much as you can, a good deep belly laugh. You remember when you were a kid and you could laugh so hard that tears came to your eyes and you're rolling on the ground and your stomach hurt? Yeah, do that. <laughs> and it's, it's hard to do for grown-ups especially, you know, little kids. I remember my son being little and when, whenever we went over to my friend's house, she had three little boys and he and one of those little boys, they'd just take one look at each other and they were just laughing so hard they couldn't stop. And it just made us all laugh. We, we had no idea what they were laughing at, but they were enjoying themselves and they were massaging their uh, organs at the same time, okay? So here are some more of those uh, little one-liner things that I found this morning. I'm so excited, it's time to take out the garbage. What to wear, what to wear? <laughs> I hope the weather's good tomorrow for my trip to Porto Backyardia. I'm getting tired of Las Living Rumia. <laughs> and day five of homeschooling. One of these little monsters called in a bomb threat. Uh, yeah, <laughs> those things are happening now. My body has absorbed so much soap and disinfectant lately that when I pee, it cleans the toilet. So there you go. Save yourself some work. And classified ad, single man with toilet paper seeks woman with hand sanitizer for good, clean fun. <laughs> so we have to be able to laugh at the situation or else we'd, we'd want to cry. So we've got to be able to have a sense of humor and recognize that this too shall pass. Um, in the meantime, just be able to smile. <laughs> um, and journaling. Journaling is another way to get out your feelings and express things uh, on the paper. Like I tell clients, it's like throwing up on the page. So you know how sometimes you get feeling so sick that you know that you, you need to throw up, but you don't want to because you don't like to do that. But if you just do, you'll feel better. That's the way it is with feelings. When you try to push them down, they just, they need to come out. So you need to let them come out some way. So go ahead and write them down. Just let them out, write them down, and you can express all those feelings. And what happens is when you write, you get a different perspective. You get some distance and objectivity. So when you write, um, you're seeing things more objectively than when you think or when you speak. You get the distance and the objectivity that quite often your answers come to you. And you're just, you're seeing them from a distance. You're not right in the middle of all of it because it's when we're in the middle of all of that that we're disabled and we're not able to see the solutions and we're not able to get ourselves out of it. So journaling helps you to do that. And then you can share and discuss with someone that you trust. Um, sometimes when you get the, the things out, it's good enough and you don't want to share it with anybody and that's okay. But if you want to, you can find somebody that you can share your thoughts and feelings with. And next is to meditate. And I know um, there are people that resist the idea of meditation. They say it sounds too woo woo or, you know, too modern, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> but um, meditation really is just about quieting the mind. And for some people, they relate more to the idea of prayer because it's the same type of thing. Um, it, you can call it whatever you want, but the idea is that you're slowing down and you're just taking time to breathe, to, to quiet yourself, find a quiet space to do it. If you've never meditated before, um, it's not, I, I wanna say it's very simple, but it can be a challenge too because our brains just wanna take off from running. We've got monkey mind going on all the time. Our brains are always working. Uh, so find a quiet space, remove the distractions. And some people like to play soft, relaxing music or nature sounds in the background. Um, you can do that. You sit comfortably and you focus on a word or a mantra. And a mantra is just a word or two that you focus on to keep your brain coming back. So when the monkeys start playing and they want to go, oh, I need to do this and what about that? And I've got to run here and I've got to run there and what's going to happen? Okay, you come back to your word or your mantra. It might just be something like peace. <sighs> All is well. You know, whatever it is, you come up with a word or two that you can focus on. 
and um, you just slow everything down. Um, right now, if you're familiar with, I know you're familiar with Oprah, but uh, she has a friend, Deepak Chopra. And if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, but he does a lot of things on meditation. And they do a meditation series. It's um, 21 days. It's, they offer it as 21. They actually always give you a bonus day, so it's really 22 days. And this started last week again, where they're doing the free one. And this one is on hope. If you go to ChopraMeditation.com, it's C-H-O-P-R-A Meditation.com, you can get the free 21-day um, meditation. You can go back five days. So um, you can go ahead and pick it up. I listen to it every day, and it's been a really good one, and they've tried to adjust it specifically for this COVID-19 thing that's going on right now. So you can check that out if it helps you to do a guided meditation. Um, keeping a sense of humor and smile or laugh on purpose. Um, remember when you were a kid and kids would get together and they would just uh, lie down on the ground or on the floor and have somebody start to laugh and then somebody next to them would laugh and they'd have their heads on each other's tummies just laughing until everybody got the giggles. You know, do it on purpose. Choose to, to laugh or smile. Read something that makes you laugh or smile. Watch TVs, TV shows or movies or videos that cause you to laugh or smile. There are always all kinds of silly cat videos and things like that that are out there that you can uh, get a good laugh from watching. So check those out. I like a good comedy now and then. Um, they're always fun. So something that, yes, great. Thanks for, thanks for putting that in there. Um, let's see. Call or video chat with someone that you enjoy who has a good sense of humor. We all know people that make us smile and laugh when we're around them. So make contact with them. Uh, give them a call, set up a time where you can talk with them. And then think about this and this whole thing. Imagine the stories that you're going to tell about this unusual time 20 years from now. <laughs> you're going to look back and you're going to say, oh, let me tell you. Remember back when there was the COVID-19 thing that was going on? And you're going to tell some of the funny stories that came from it, like people going in and taking all the toilet paper and you know, everybody having to have hand sanitizer and, you know, you'll, you'll think about some of the things and you'll be able to find some humor in them, even though it's hard at the time, but think about in the future, what you'll be able to look forward to. Okay. And here are a few more of those things that showed up today. I don't think anyone expected that when we changed the clocks, we'd go from standard time to twilight zone. <laughs> Those of you who remember the twilight zone. This morning I saw a neighbor talking to her cat. It was obvious she thought her cat understood her. I came into the house, told my dog, and we laughed a lot. <laughs> People are kind of going a little bit stir crazy right now. <laughs> um, so after this quarantine, will the producers of my 600 pound life just find me or do I find them? <laughs> Heard a lot of people say they're, they're not losing weight while they're at home. <laughs> and quarantine day five, went to this restaurant called The Kitchen. You have to gather all the ingredients and make your own meal. I have no clue how this place is still in business. <laughs> and day six of homeschooling, my child just said, I hope I don't have the same teacher next year. I'm offended. <laughs> author unknown. So I hope that some of those things made you smile today and that you got a laugh out of some of them. So once again, just remember, focus on what you can control, not what you can't. And to work on your business right now, this is a time where everything has slowed down. This is a chance for you to go ahead and research some ideas to grow your business and read some books on marketing and business. And I'm taking it right now, I've been doing a, a free webinar from Jeff Walker, who talks about launches. 
and you can sign up. You can get on it. It's on Facebook and it's at three o'clock again today. He's doing a four part series and it's free. So that's one thing that I'm doing to try to learn more things about uh, what I can do with my business while things have slowed down in some ways. And take time for personal growth. This is a time to go ahead and read and take a class. And there are so many free online things that are being offered right now. So get out there and give them a try. Um, if there's something you want to learn how to do, this is a time to learn how to do it. If you want to learn how to play the guitar or learn how to do yoga online or um, read, a, read some books that you've wanted to do or start writing, you know, do something that you want to do for yourself. And focus on your self-care. Make sure that you're getting enough sleep, that you're eating healthy, that you're getting some exercise, that you're taking time just to be and relax and slow down and enjoy this slower time right now because this too shall pass. And pretty soon we'll be back to the busyness that we're all used to. It will look a little bit differently, I think, but um, it, it will be back. So find ways to socialize and connect with family and friends in new and sometimes old ways, um, such as Zoom, FaceTime, phone. Remember that? A phone. Uh, writing letters, <laughs> the old-fashioned way. Playing games, watching home movies. Um, you know, anything that you can do to connect with people. I know people are playing games with other family members on a computer. So like they're playing Uno and everybody has their own deck of cards and then they're they're playing that way with each other so there are ways that you can still connect with people and here are some of the resources that are available um, my book is available through amazon and then i have the audio cds that you can get from me you can also get the books from me if you would like one let me know and i'd be happy to sign it for you and get it to you um, this was a, a video on uh, YouTube that I got the other day from Jack Canfield, and it's on practicing mindfulness during uncertainty. So there's the link for that. And the free 21-day meditation with Oprah, Oprah and Deepak Chopra. And then here are some apps on your phone for doing some meditation. Simple Habit, Insight Timer, and San Velo and they are all free. You can get paid things on them, but you can also just use the free parts of them. And then the Jeff Walker Free Product Launch Formula Masterclass on Facebook is what I just mentioned that I'm doing um, again today. So it's going on for four days. So that, I think, is everything that I have. Is Does somebody have questions or comments I, uh, this is steve and i have now unmuted everybody so if you have questions for colleen go ahead and shout them out in a orderly fashion i just want to thank you very much well thank you thank you for attending i appreciate it colleen this is tammy i would just uh throw in um, anything Zig Ziglar as well as a resource. Um, you know, the master motivator of motivators. So um, I highly recommend anything Zig Ziglar as well. I do too. I love Zig Ziglar. Uh, I saw him in person and that, that was interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Tammy. Anybody else? Is there anything that you wanted me to cover that I didn't cover? I would be happy to to do that. I also have from my book, um, I have an evaluation where you can evaluate yourself on where you are with balance in your life. And it'll be interesting to see where you are right now as this is going on compared to how you are normally. And I would be happy to get that to you. So if you want to go to my website, um, www.balanced, B-A-L-A-N-C-E-D, hyphen life dot us um, I can type that in here as well uh, that's my website or you can send me an email and I will make sure that you get it um, 
So that's my website. And then my email is Life at gmail. Com. So you can reach me that way as well, and I'd be happy to send that to you. Helene, I typed in a uh, mention that there are some excellent podcasts. One is uh, the Inside Outside Innovation podcast uh, oh, that no. Brian Ardinger, uh, and there, there's over 190 archived. And then Gallup has been doing a series of webinars on uh, leading um, leading through COVID-19 and it's addressed such topics such as well-being, how leaders can help manage the the well-being of their remote workers, that sort of thing. So, oh, uh, excellent. So excellent. if you just go to the Gallup website or just type in Gallup COVID-19, it should take you to uh, want at least some information about it. Well, that would be great. Thank you. I, I appreciate um, any kind of information like that, you know, I, I love to pass things along and share them with other people. So uh, any information like that would be, would be great. So thank you. I'll have to take a picture of that. Is there a way that you can get a picture of the chat um, for me, Luke? Sure, I'll send you a copy via email. That would be great. That'd be great. Uh, and I, I'm also offering, this week I do ethics workshops for counselors on Thursday and Friday, but next week on the 24th, I'm doing something with um, my friend Devin Martin, and it is on finding balance based on your Enneagram type. So if you are not familiar with the Enneagram, um, it's, it kind of identifies people under nine different personality styles. And it's very fascinating. And uh, once you find out your type, it's really interesting to see um, how you start identifying other people and you learn how to um, work with them and you see what kinds of things you do and you start seeing yourself in it. And it's very fascinating. So if you're interested in signing up for that, you can do that on my website as well. But um, we're looking forward to that. That's going to be a six hour workshop and all day. Normally we do that here in my conference room, but we will be doing that via webinar, <laughs> via Zoom. So we're all getting our Zoom experience right now. Um, <clears throat> and Brooke shared one quote that I saw that helped me the other day, you are not working at home, you are at home during a crisis trying to work. <laughs> yes, isn't that true? <laughs> For sure. And thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. And any other questions or comments that you have, I would be happy to take them and um, and use them. So thank and, you all. And, and this is Steve with Southeast again. And uh, we appreciate uh, Colleen being here today to present this great information. Uh, if any of you uh, want to get a hold of her and are having any difficulty doing that, please get a hold of me or one of my team members at Southeast and we will put you in touch with Colleen. A uh, couple of reminders of upcoming events. We will have a Perk Up Thursday coffee, virtual coffee this Thursday the 16th at 10 a.m. Uh, community development resources will be our uh, speakers and they will answer questions about the government programs that are out there now. So if you have questions uh, about the government programs and if you qualify, uh, join us on uh, the 16th this Thursday at 10 a.m. The following week on the 23rd, we have Steve Molly. Uh, Steve is a Focus Suite graduate and he uh, has been helping a lot of small businesses through this crisis and uh, he's always an interesting speaker so I would urge you to check that out on the 23rd. With that, uh, again, thank you everyone for attending. We will be putting a copy of this presentation out on our YouTube channel uh, where you can watch it again if you like. We appreciate it and uh, hopefully we'll see you on a webinar or coffee event uh, again here real soon. Thank you. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you, Kat. Good to see you. And thank you all. Okay, so.
who is still here.